Hello everyone, in this video, let us use the script runner for Jira to add a label to an issue. So today we will use uh, a label manager. So label manager is, uh, as you might have guessed, it is basically a way to, um, it is basically one of the class to uh, help you in uh, managing labels. So in this example, what I will be doing, I will be using a label manager to add a label, simple, a very simple thing. We will basically add a label to an issue. And we'll also see a few other things what all we can do with label manager. And I also want to uh, show you how you can do error handling when you are working with uh, uh, script for Jira or in fact, uh, Groovy in general. So the first thing that we will be doing today is uh, we will be uh, using a variable called uh, label manager and I'm basically using this variable to uh, start checking all the methods that I may have, I may be able to use uh, within label manager. So with the help of label manager, you can do a lot of other things like uh, if I you know show you within IntelliJ of course, because it will help us in uh, autocomplete. So if I press dot, you can see we have a lot of uh, methods like add label, uh, we can also get label. So before I add a label, wh why not let us take a look at the existing labels within uh, our issue. So the parameter that we need to pass here, you can see here IntelliJ is saying that the parameter is issue ID. So you can say issue dot uh, ID and uh, this should be okay. And uh, the issue that I'm right now working on is uh, within my issue variable. Uh, it depends where you're running the script. If you're running the script within a console, uh, you have to use the, you have to basically define your own issue variable and you have to fetch the issue. Uh, but in cases where you are working with uh, maybe a listener or a post function, you may already have this uh, issue variable already for you. So for this example, what I will be doing, I will be simply returning the labels. And uh, if you look at the uh, let me just show you the type. So the type here is, uh, I'm just, I, I, I want to show you the type. So when you when you when you use use this method called get labels, the uh, the return type is a label, and uh, we can of course convert it into something else if we have to. So you may have more than uh, one labels in your uh, in your uh, um, issue. So if I go to my Jira instance, so I'll be using a scrum-38. And uh, if you look here on this issue, I have one, two, three, four labels. And if I run this script, which is uh, add label, of course, we will be adding it in a moment, but I want to first fetch the list of uh, labels. So let us run this if we can. So we have an error which is fine, I might have done something wrong. Let us uh, check what is the problem. So we have to basically use issue ID. So I did a mistake, but we can solve it. So we can see here that we have admin, admin label, design UI. So it is, uh, it is a list of labels and um, you can fetch the labels. But uh, in this video, I basically wanted to show you how to add a label. So we'll use uh, the same label manager and uh, we will use a method. I'm just taking, taking a look at the method. So we have uh, add label. That is something that we can use. And uh, before I use add label, I also wanted to talk about, uh, uh, I mean, uh, other things that you can do. So apart from adding a label, I believe you can also do something like set labels, so when you have more than one, so you can, so right now we are using script runner to, in this particular example, of course, we are adding one label to the existing list of labels, but you can also have more than one label that you can set by using set labels, uh, where you need to, if you look at the parameter here, the parameter here is, one of the parameter is uh, uh, set strings, st set string of labels. 
but we are right now doing it one by one. So I'll use add label and uh, we have now passed in some parameters. So the first parameter is the user. So which is, uh, I mean, the user that uh, that will be used to run this. So that user would be the currently logged in user, which is my account. The second parameter is, uh, let me just check again. So the first parameter is user. The second parameter is uh, issue dot ID, I believe. I hope I'm not. So let me just do it again. I'm not massively familiar with IntelliJ. I'm uh, more of a Emacs guy. So yes, so this is now good. So the first parameter is user, second is issue ID, label, and then Boolean send notification. So uh, Boolean send notification means that you want to send a notification or, or not, but right now we don't really want to send a notification event, we'll make it as false. So user issue dot ID and uh, label itself. So my label is, let us say, new label. And I don't really want to send a, a notification. So I don't really want this to be triggered. So I'll make it as false. And this looks good to me, I think. This is quite, quite, quite good. I'm uh, happy with this. There's no error. Usually when you're working with, with IntelliJ, IntelliJ will help you with uh, the possible errors that you may have before, before even you run it. So let us run this and uh, see if you are able to add a label. So it, it is returning me new label, uh, but let me just check and go back to my issue and refresh it. Hopefully it will be added. So yes, we have a new label, which is uh, good news. So what if you do some uh, thing wrong? Because right now we are not doing error handling and I talk about this in every video. Whenever you write scripts, write your scripts so that they fail uh, and you add a lot of checks, validations to pass your uh, test cases if you are writing test cases. So you should do test driven programming. So uh, in case you know how Jira works, you can't, cannot really have spaces. So the, one, so the thing that you can do is you can uh, check here whether, I mean, you can make sure that uh, the parameter has no space, but what if you're not checking it, it will not work. I mean, you will get an error, but the, it, it is okay to have an error, but you have to cache the error. So let me just run this and show you how it works. So right now it says, uh, I mean, right now there is an error because uh, um, we are not really catching for this particular case. Uh, so it says, of course, illegal argument exception, label, new label, contained spaces, which is invalid. So let us fix this. So what we can do is we can enclose this piece of line, this, this not piece of code or I mean this particular line only, uh, within uh, a try and catch. And uh, what I will be doing now is uh, I will basically log something to the, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll basically do some logging that uh, error handling error adding a label so you, you can do this or you can also add uh, maybe a variable like define error message error adding a label i mean when you add when you use these variables it is a bit easier to reuse them and of course uh, modify the text if needed so you can have maybe a list of all the error messages somewhere on top, like a global variable. So right now I'll do simply error message plus I will also want to indicate some additional uh, messages, something like um, something like uh, I mean, why this failed because I want to know what was the reason. So for doing that, you can cache the error. So if you uh, look at the error here, you have illegal argument exception. You can copy it and it might work. So I, I'll copy it here and I'll use uh, my own variable like illegal argument exception. It could be IA 
E just to have some uh, consistency. And when you're looking at this error, this variable, you can use IAE dot message. So usually this message will have some message. And in, and in fact, it will be the same message that you see here, uh, the, the label, blah, 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 and whatever. So basically, uh, the script will work, but it will give you some message that it failed instead of uh, the failure of the whole script. Because if you have failure, your automation can break, or if you're doing something, maybe, you know, you're running some scripts that are supposed to work, uh, but if you have an error, your, your whole system can fail because uh, uh, you have to you have, you have not really um, handled that particular error in your piece of code. So this looks okay to me and if I run this now, let us see what happens. I'll uh, click on the run button and uh, no message, which is fine. Uh, we can, because we are not really, really printing anything, but uh, we can log, we can take a look, take a look at the log tab here and uh, you can see the label here. So this is actually better because there is no failure of the script. We have the error that we captured and we are displaying it in the log. And uh, this is something that I thought I'll probably share in this video because uh, you should be doing it uh, so that your scripts are not failing. And uh, what else? Um, I, I, I think this is it for this video. As I mentioned before, instead of adding this label, one by like instead of adding one label at a time you can use uh, set labels as well uh, because you might want to you might want to add multiple labels instead of one but uh, I, th I think you get the idea how exactly it works using the label manager so this is all i wanted to share in this video i hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today thank you very much